<clears throat> now we're so busy losing that we don't realize what is happening with our lives. We're working double shifts and we're working harder and our costs are increasing so we're fighting harder and harder and harder just to get to make ends meet and our taskmasters our governments are making it harder and harder to make things meet they said they're there for the people but take a look from the 60s to 70s to 80s and 90s to here we are just 40 years later I'm 55 56 years old at the time of this video I'm telling you we're watching the economy go to hell in a handbag and they present this little thing called minimum wage thing and they want to raise it but I want to show you folks they say oh we're gonna help the poor man we're gonna give them a little bit more we'll make this a minimum wage and they've raised the minimum wage well guess what mr. businessman the guy who's making millions and millions of dollars off the sweat of our backs to turn around saying you know what we don't need this environment there's a thousand billion Chinese over there who Will work for like a bowl of rice. You want eight bucks an hour? You want ten bucks an hour? Fifteen, twenty? Go ahead. I got a guy who's willing to work for a bowl of rice. And we've lost a lot of our economy by shipping things overseas. Now it's helped their economy and it's given them a fighting resource. But get what? Guess what? Well, we're out here in the street striking for more money. They're over there still working for a bowl of rice. So fat businessman is taking all that extra money and just getting fatter. And it's getting harder for us to make ends meet. We're watching an economic swing around and slow down. But suddenly we realize there is no economy anymore. And people want to shut doors. I think by regulating things, it's going to change. I don't think so. It's going to make things worse. America for America doesn't work. It showed it in the 30s. That was a mistake. That was a thought. That was the ideology behind it before. And it will continue on today. Don't forget, my friends, who's to the north and who's to the south. <coughs> you sit there and those crazy Canadians to the north and those wet back Mexicans to the south. You got this racist point of view that America exists on your own. Well, guess what? Arabia gives you 80% of the oil. If it wasn't for Canadian and Mexican oil flowing freely, free trade, freely across that border, you wouldn't have any business. And a lot of the power and your electricity comes from Canada. We got the dams. We got a lot of water up here. And your rivers are running dry. Now consider this. You sit there going, well, we're in economic repression. You go, well, guess what? Because you're in economic repression to keep Americans working, they fired, bought the factories that kept Canada working to keep Canadians working. Canadian companies were bought out by that fat, multi-billion dollar American tyrant who's now shutting them down under the guise of, well, it's going to bring more prosperity because we'll keep more Americans working. I want you to go through history and granted population has increased. But I want you to do a ratio. Do a total population of the United States. Do one for your state. Do one for your local city. And then see what, how many people were working in a percentage wise. Then compare it to today you'll find that over 40% of your work, of your businesses, disappeared in less than 20 years. Majority, the majority, the chunk, disappeared over 20 years. Where did it go? Where did it go? 10 years ago, what happened? Not even 10 years ago. This is 2009. Uh, yes, 2000. <laughs> I should know this. Next year's Olympics up here. Uh, don't hit me on that one. But guess what? Yeah, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. This is two, it's coming up in September. 10 years ago. Is this September? Huh? 
Is that 10 years ago? Wasn't it in 1999? Huh? Or was it 2000, 2001? But anyway, you know the September 11th scenario here I'm trying to allude to. And there was an attack on your finances, and I found that in Ezekiel. And I started, everyone was count, discounting this little twit as a, as, as a flake. And they didn't want to listen to them. They're going, don't pay attention to them. And September 11th was something I had been talking about since the 70s, and I had been warning. But I didn't know what the heck, I, you're right, I didn't know what I was talking about. I was a babbling fool. But with that, I found the scripture that I needed, and it liberated me. And I started playing a game with you. I played a little Jeopardy game. Is this it? Is this it? And one of these days, I'm going to release this on video. I've done it in several churches, and it just blown them off the wall. And they began to wonder, man, well, maybe he's onto something. And the best thing that ever happened, I found another scripture also in Ezekiel. If I can find it and do the homework, it's time for you to get the dust off your Bibles and find it for yourself. I ain't going to tell you where this stuff is. It's in the Bible. And I said to them, I said, I'll tell you what. We'll let God decide, because I found this other scripture, and I said to them, I said, if this is really happening, if what I'm seeing is really happening, all right, the war in Afga Afghanistan is really what I'm seeing here. If this attack on the world um, uh, trade towers is really what I'm seeing here, here's your final sign, because it was in the Bible, it says when this is, they'll ask for another sign, and this is your final sign. All right, and I said, if this scripture is true, and the way I understand it, Israel's flag will fly over Palestine. And two weeks, count it, 14 days, Israel went and invaded Palestine, and the Israeli flag flew over Arafat's compound. I'll give you a date. It was on CNN. It was on CBC, it was on the BBC, we all saw it. Now granted, they've taken it back down. They've taken it back down. And they're trying to negotiate land for peace, and they're being told, you're being told, land for peace, land for peace, you got to give up this theology thing. Those church people need to be shut down. They're just too arrogant. They're, de they're the problems. They're the problem makers. We need to shut them away. And we're take got to take a look at the next few scriptures. Now this, this original message was preached out in 1978-79. And it was called, Let My People Go. And this is called now, The Contest with the Pharaoh. Because the war is on. And we're fighting once again with the Pharaoh of this world.